everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this uh, Inboxes MSBNB webinar lecture series. This is a uh, second one for this year. Um, I'm uh, Ng Chan uh, your moderator for today's webinar. I hope the introduction and the video that just not show and also the slides provide you some background of uh, Inboxes. And also, uh, for those who are interested to uh, work with us, you are most welcome. And uh, feel free to uh, browse our Institute of, System, Institute of Systems Biology uh, websites and uh, social media for the latest uh, updates and also info regarding the activities of uh, Inbasis. So I'm, I feel very grateful today that uh, you, all of you can join us for these uh, webinars. Uh, the collaboration between the Inbasis and also Malaysian Society for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, MSBMP. Um, the second one for this year, as I mentioned, we have uh, four, four uh, um, similar webinars last year. So this is a, uh, this webinar is focused on uh, structures biology. So the Inbasis webinar was a uh, a series, a webinar series was established and started in 2021 for the purpose of uh, providing the knowledge and research experience sharing platform. Um, we still continue this uh, webinar because of the support that we obtained from uh, for the past webinars. So without uh, further ado, I would like to introduce our honorable speaker for today, Associate Professor Dr. Gao Yongkui from School of Particle Sciences, Nanyang Technology University, Singapore. Dr. Dr. Gao obtained his uh, PhD from Zhejiang University, China. Later, he did his uh, postdoc training in Hokkaido University, Japan, and joined MRC LMB, uh, Laboratory of Molecular Biology uh, in UK, uh, worked with uh, Nobel laureate Wingi Lama Kristan, um, also a former president of a Royal Society. In 2010, he moved to NTU to build his own group or establish his own group with the award from uh, Singapore National Research Foundation, NRF Fellowship. Dr. Gao is an expert of uh, structural biology and protein chemistry. And currently his group is interested in doing molecular biology of protein translation and gene regulations, molecular mechanism of antibiotic targeting ribosome and antibacterial compound development, as well as uh, exopolysaccharide biosynthesis of biofilm formations and regulation and its potential application development. Dr. Gao has published paper in very high impact journals such as Science uh, Cells, um, nature structure biology, PNAS, and etc. The result have been uh, widely the publication have been widely cited by many of the high impact journals as well. Currently, he serves as an editor board member of several journals, including uh, Frontier is in microbiology, scientific report, and a few of nature publishing group of uh, journals. Uh, let us Welcome Dr. Gao to share with us his work, um, recent work on relating the protein translation. Dr. Gao, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you so much for your uh, excellent uh, introduction, Dr. Chang, and uh, also uh, moderate uh, my talk. So hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. So this is um, Gao Yonggui. So from a School of Biological Science, NTU, Singapore. So today I'm going to talk a bit the protein translation regulation and the quality control. Yeah, if we talk about the protein translation, and then uh, I think most of us is, uh, you know, uh, learned the biological science, right? Then we learned, uh, we know this is like a central dogma. Uh, so the central dogma, of course, in, uh, you know, state like the genetic information actually stored in the DNA, and then there were you know through transcri uh, transcription, 
and then you know pass to uh, RNA actually the messenger RNA and of course messenger RNA will bind to the ribosome and then they decode like the functional protein. Yeah. So for this one, so we will see is so it's actually it's here the ribosome. So it's like the we call it the protein translation machine. And then you can see the how the bacterial uh, ribosome uh, like uh, control the protein translation, right? Actually it involves it involves like there are four steps. Of course, uh, all of us know the first step is the protein translation initiation. You know, like they form this like uh, you know the entire ribosome, and then the start you know the protein translation. The first you know like the uh, synthesized methylene uh, amino acid, and then they go to the we call this elongation cycle, right? So each each cycle, and then they make one you know peptide and of course if we get the stop codon and to the uh, ribosome A side and then the ribosome uh, you know protein synthesize will stop and then we get this uh, like release the peptide and then there are so two ribosomes will be like uh, dissociated and then they go to the we call the recycling stage so of course at the heart the most important is the you know the, the elongation uh cycle so so uh, at this stage right so recently uh from my postdoc till now we are work on the concentrate more on the elongation cycle for example if you add the curamycin this is the one antibiotics and then they can trap eftu and then to the ribosome okay of course if we add some like a uh, recorder sorry they ask it to turn off the the virtue uh, background because we Yeah, if if we add some like we call uh, bacterial toxin like the real E or YLEB, and then this one can you know cut digest messenger RNA, and then they can stop protein translation in response to some certain stress. Okay, and then we also work on, for example, if we add the near medicine and also some like a stress protein BPA. And then we can get the BPA bound to the ribosome. Of course, we also know that EFG, you know, can promote uh, uh, translocation. And then if we use, sorry, if we use EFG GTP, right, GTP CP, then we can trap EFG in the ribosome. And then we can get this pre -translo translocation state. And of course, if we add like a facetic acid, you know, this is one type of antibiotics, and then they can trap EFG after ATP hydrolysis or after GTP hydrolysis. And then we also work on several stage. For example, we can get the carbonate e tRNA bind to the ribosome, where we also work on the left A and the bind to the ribosome. And we also work on the A, we call the ABCF protein. This is actually can generate antibiotic resist, resistance. So put all together, like recently uh, we are working on, you know, a number of, you know, like a ribosome in various, uh, a number of uh, ribosome associated factor and then bound to the ribosome in diverse, you know, stage linked to this elongation cycle. And then the, today, then I will talk a bit. It's like a two uh, translation GTPase factors. We call this BFA and LFA. Actually, this is the parallax of EFG because you can see they can ubiquitously conserved in like bacteria, mitochondria, and the chloroplast genomes. And also, they are basically is you know stress response. 
you know, non-essential. However, if under stress, and then they become essential. Of course, they are the ribosome association. And then you can see uh, we de uh, determine this uh, uh, the structure of the BPA and also the left A bound ribosome. Of course, this previously they determined a long time ago the EFG. You can see they have very quite similar overall structure. But of course, EFG they have unique uh, uh, domain four, but for the left A and the BPA, you know, they don't have. They don't have a domain four, but then you have this like a C terminal domain like here. We call this C T D for uh, left A, and also here for the B P. So very very interesting. So overall similar, but a bound to the ribosome in different uh, functional state, right? And then particularly we determine this like a B P isolated B B P structure. You can see. This is uh, you know uh, five domains, right? And also particularly they have this unique uh, C terminal domain. We, we we also found that this is a novel forward, okay? And of course, more interestingly, how it bound to the ribosome. We determined the BP bound to the ribosome structure. You can see because this is the entire ribosome. So to clarify the structure, so we remove this fifties, so we can clearly say. Okay, so BP bound to actually the you know A side and then the interacting with the A side TNA. Okay, so this is the P side TNA. Of course, this is the E side TNA. You can see uh, the BP also the catalytic residue is a histine seventy eight. Okay, and also they have the C terminal loop. We call the uh, is around here uh, five four four to five five two. They are very very important for the BPA binding. So let so how is this importance of this residue? So later I will tell you uh, our uh, recent result. Of course, we also uh, you know uh, get this like PBGBP bound to the BPA, but only the GTP form of the BPA can bind to the ribosome. Why? Because after we determine the structure, then we can do the structure comparison. They will found, oh, you know, the PPGPP form bound to the BPA, and then they would clash with the ribosome. So actually, this is the Sarsen ribosome of SRL loop. This is very, very critical for the ribosome function. Okay, so this is why we call this a stress homologue uh, element PPGPP code. Very very important for the BPA to you know to regulate its function in response to st stress. Yeah, and then but this what is the precise of the BPA function? Uh, even we have this nice structure, but we still not clearly understand. So to resolve this issue, and then recently we also uh, have one like a PhD student uh, go work on this one. So we 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 try to figure out, you know, some stress, and then we see how importance of the BPA for the cell growth, right? And then we screen a few uh, conditions. Then we found the one is the temperature. For example, if under the optimal temperature like a thirty seven, you will see what you. Look out, you know, this BPA protein, or you generate various BPA like a mutant, like the catalytic residue, just I mentioned, right? And also the C terminal loop, very, very important for BPA bound to the ribosome, right? And whatever you see, the cell grows, no much change. However, if we under, uh, we call this low temperature, like 25 degree, we call this is a suboptimal temperature. You will find, wow! If you look out the BP, you will see what happened. You know the growth was dramatically delayed, right? And then, if you look out the BP simultaneously, for example, you sub supplement with the BP express vector, you will see you get the BP express in the lookout string, and then they can rescue you know the growth, right? 
And also, we also uh, found if you look out, for example, the RLUC, this is the one like a mesolase, mesolase enzyme, and then you will find uh, even lookout be paid simultaneously lookout this uh, mesolase enzyme, and then there not much influence. And of course, uh, we also found, for example, if you look out at the rear A, uh, I think that uh, the Dr. Liang also work on the rear A. So the rear A actually is generated. This is uh, just like I mentioned, the PPGPP. You will found this have similar phenotype, you know, as this BP lookout stream. You will see the growth, you know, was dramatically delayed. Okay. And uh, even this is true for the other, you know, in uh, catalytic residue, that means, for example, H78, if you mute this residue, you will see this also very, very important for the uh, cell growth. Of course, you will see, for example, the C-terminal loop, it is important for BPA bound to ribosome, right? And then if you look out this BPA, and then even you you know express the BPA, but without the system loop, you will see they don't have any complement effect. This is demonstrate the catalytic residue very important and the system loop also very very important for the BPA function. And then of course then we next we also detect the you know like a swarming. Yeah, swimming motility. You will see, for example, this is uh, we just grow uh, at the suboptimal temperature, like 24 degree. We even grow longer, you know, like it's a 48 degree. You will see, for example, in the wild type, in you know, the cell, you know, the, the, the it can grow, you know, larger, right? That means the cell swimming uh, motility is normal. However, if you look out the people, you will see you know, the, the, the cell cannot, you know, expand. That means the swimming motility was affected, okay? However, if you uh, supplement, complement with the BPA expression in the lookout stream, you will see, okay, the cell motility come back, okay? For others, uh, you, you will see the similar result, but I will de demonstrate it, like the C-terminal uh, residue uh, loop and also the catalytic residue, all oh, are very, very important for the BPA function, okay? Yeah, we, we, uh, we want to know, for example, under the uh, optimal uh, condition, right? And then if you look out at the BPA, what kind of you know regulation change? I mean the protein expression profile also change, right? You know, to, to analyze this, then we have done the tandem mass tag mass spectrometry, we call the TMT mass analysis. You will see for this Varkalo plot, you can see for example, uh, in this case, uh, we compare BP lookout stream with a wire type stream, you can see. Of course, if you look at the BPA, in this case, you know, you don't get the BPA express, right? So that means BPA express level, level much low, of course. This is true because you don't have the BPA. Uh, simultaneously, you will get the longer, for, you know, like the protein, we label it, you know, like the blue ball, for example, we uh, label here five protein, they are dramatically, you know, like up, regulation of the uh, expression, right? And then, uh, for example, then if we, in the lookout stream, then we express the BPA protein, okay? And then you will see, the, okay, the comeback. So for all number of this protein, the gone. That means this, uh, you express the protein in the lookout stream, they also complement, you know, this, uh, expression, upregulation of this protein. And then very, very interesting, actually for this number of this uh, protein, uh, they are all involved, for example, uh, uh, RNA metabolism. That means, okay, you look out the BPA stream and then you 
culture to see on the, you know, like a 25 degree and then you get the protein involved mRNA metabolites were upregulated. Of course, we know that uh, this could be uh, RNA uh, very, very important for the, you know, ribosome uh, biogenesis for the ribosome, you know, assembly. And then we, we also uh, do the ribosome, you know, profiling. You will see, for example, we showed here. So the black line is the wild type. Okay. So in the wild type, you can get this, you know, uh, 30 s peak, the small subunit, and then the 50 s, the large subunit, and then of course the entire 70 s. Okay. However, if in the red case uh, line, right, if you look out the B page string, you will see eh, you get this 70 s peak lower. And the 50 piece also lower simultaneous, but I get the you know more in the 30 s, and also you have this shoulder you know between 50 s and the 30 s. We say this is pre 50 s, and then if you you know supplement the PPA uh, expression or like just mentioned, you also double mutant the PPA as well as their you know uh, methylates of RLUC you will see they are all this in these two cases they are all come back as like a wild type. Okay. Of course interestingly if you uh, do the same and then the supplement be pay but with the catalytic residue mutate or the just like I mentioned the C terminal loop deletion you will see they are more or less as this uh, you know, lookout stream. You also get this like a shoulder for the pre fifty s. Okay. Yeah, for this this is the case the same. Only you know so this is a demonstrator. Okay, so the BP could be very very important for the ribosome biogenesis, particularly the fifty s, right? And then the next thing we we did the binding or say for example. We do the ribosome profiling, and then simultaneously we do the antibody to check whether you get the BP bound to the uh, ribosome or not. Because we get this expressed uh, BP with histone tag, so now we do Western blood. You found okay, your BP is indeed combining, you know, thirty s, even the you know fifty s as well as the pre fifty s, you know. And we also did the uh, sucrose pelleting down because if we a small protein can bind to the ribosome and then they were sediment together with the large ribosome. And then we, we check, okay, it is, you know, the BPA bound to the pre 50s. Okay, oh, that means demonstrate all BPA, it is indeed very important for the uh, 50s, you know, biogenesis under you know like a, a cold stress okay and then with this then what we have learned right for example we learned the gtb hydrolysis and also the c terminal loop of the bpa are very very crucial for the 50s biogenesis at low temperature and there are, if loss of bpa and then there were results to results in up regulation of the RNA metabolism protein. Just now I sh showed you guys, like there are at least five RNA metabolism proteins. And also uh, this ob uh, observation together, they let us know, you know, okay, this is the BPA is really, you know, bona fide ribosome assembly factor. It could be important for the ribosome biogenesis at, you know, Cold stress. Okay, this is uh, we say the a few uh, the ribosome associated protein BPA or LPA, and then next we will show you some other uh, ribosome associated factor. So like this, uh, what we uh, recently investigated, GIP two and the RAC one protein. We know this is you know. Uh, GIP2 or uh, RAC1, they will call this a scaffold protein because they can bind, you know, can, for example, they have more than 50 binding partners. This 
studying partners, protein, right, can involve, you know, diverse uh, cellular function, for example, uh, signaling, trafficking, or metabolic, right? And also, uh, uh, we also test, for example, give two not essential in this uh, C neuroformance. This is our, uh, like a passenger fungi can cause, you know, like uh, our nervous, central nervous system, uh, brain, nervous system, like uh, meningitis. So you will see, for example, here, if, uh, so we have two, uh, so this is a viral type, and then this one, empty square, is a lookout. So you will see under, you know, 37 degree, so lookout will give you two, no much change, either YPT median or this YMB median. Okay, so 37, no much change. Okay, however, oh, sorry. So like a third degree, no much change. However, under the 37, you can see particularly at this YMB median, if you look at the give 2 and then you can see the growth much, much delayed. Then we can think about it because this, uh, say, neuroformance uh, is a human uh, passenger fungi. So if we want to infect human, of course, this is a uh, temperature would be 37. So that means, okay, the give 2 could be you know, very, very important for this, you know, vigilance of this uh, passenger fungi, right? And then, then follow this, then we investigate the, the GIP2, then we determine the GIP2 structure actually is very, very similar like the REC1, so they have the theta uh, uh, 7, like a propeller, you know, unit, you have the unit 1, 2, 3, 4, all together is 7. Uh, propeller fold structure. So this is the top view and the side view. And then importantly, then we we will show is that actually the give two or rec one, they are both ribosome associated factor. You know, for example, we showed here. So if you have the wire type ADS, okay, then you also have the wire type of ADS plus give two or we also have the you know give to lookout ATS. Then we if you look out give to right and then you add give to with uh, the, the the ATS lookout string uh, ribosome, you will see uh, this is give two. You found all oh, the give two can bound to the ribosome. Okay, of course your your wire type uh, here they also have this give two. You so so here because the give two has a histidine tag, so we can use that. And his tag that clearly showed, okay. Even you look out ATS, right? And then you add a in vitro, add the give 2 and then give 2 can bound to this ATS. Okay. Uh, we also test the REC1. So if you look out the give 2 and then you found the REC1, you know, even you also can bound to the uh, ATS. Of course, we use anti REC1 and you get the signal here. Okay, and also interestingly, we we found give two not only interacting with ribosome, they also can interact with you know EF4A. Of course, what is EF4A? This is you know translation elevation uh, uh, factor. So that means they give two, you know, where also involve you know uh, protein translation initiation because you can see here you can get this. Uh, you know, give two also can get this uh, EF4A singular, right? You know, this is uh, give two. This uh, here, this is the yeah. This is the EF4 singular. You can see this and the, uh, get this. Okay, then the uh, the uh, we also found one one very interesting is that this is uh, the continuing protein, uh, we call it the candidin 3, so we know the candidin uh, is recently is uh, the integrin activation protein, then they can involve, you know, uh, single line trans uh, transmission for the uh, uh, human, okay? And then 
we also found, for example, the the rec one can mediate the continuing bound to the ref zone. Okay, for example, here we have done uh, this ref zone profiling, and then of course you can see the rec one signal. You know, can get the rec one can bound to the ref zone simultaneously. The continuing also bound to the ref zone because we use this uh, IB, you know, Western blot. Of course, we also have done this SDS page, you know, clearly show that here this kidney and also the kidney bound to the right zone needs the rack one. For example, if you look out this uh, like a give two, and then that means they don't have the rack one, right? You can see you don't get the kidney bandit. However, if you add, you know, look out the give two simultaneously, you add the give two. Of this rec one uh, homologous protein, and then so that means kidney three definitely they can bound the ribosome, but they need you know the scaffold like rec one to mediate the interaction. Yeah, based on this one, then we also found okay the kidney three can interact with ribosome and also can regulate the, the for example some specialized. Protein expression, and then this is required for proliferation of the you know chronic myeloid leukemia cell. Okay, this is very very interesting. So based on this, then we will uh, you know do a bit further study because for the candidin, right? You will see we have the actually we have the three types of candidin. Then we call it candidin one, candidin two, and the candidin three. But only this candidin three can you know. We are bound to the rec one, and then the interaction with the ribosome. But for other kidneys, sometimes they don't have this feature. But if you look at the structure and the domain organization, right, you will see what wow, kidney one, two, three. They have very very similar, you know, domain organization. They both have, for example, they have F zero, one, two, and the three F domains, and they have one like a pH domain, and then pH domain was in inserted between these two F2 domains. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, kidney is very, very important. It's uh, kind of linked to diverse cancer and also the disease. However, you know, the, so so far we don't have any, you know, full length of the kidney structure, right? So based on this, then we, we deter, we uh, spend, you know, a huge effort and then actually one of my PhD students work on almost four years, and then finally we determine that this, you know, case structure of the full length of human kidney three. You can see this is the N-terminal, F0, yeah, one, two, and you will see the two in between, the inserted they get this pH domain, and then the F3 domain is here, right? And then very, very interesting, after we get the structure, and then we found, oh, the form, you know, actually the form, the homotimer, you can see, we showed it here. So like this is uh, one, kidney three, this is another, uh, the yellow, another kidney three, and then this like a, a light blue, then, uh, you know, uh, or green is another kidney, so you have this, you know, timer. Right, and the very, very important we will see, for example, the F3 domain showed here, and then the intact with this pH domain, right? So the pH domain is one alpha helix 2H in here, and then the inserted to this uh, P, uh, F3 domain, the form this is an abandoned pocket, right? The form very, very important, uh, the form the chimer interface, and then we will also. Found in like several residue, for example, S478, uh, and then this uh, Q471, right? It's also here, and then uh, S478 is are very, very important for the timer interface. And then to demonstrate this timer interface, then we generate some uh, triple mutations. For example, we mutate this residue. Uh, right, the S478, we also mutated this code 471. Of course, we also generated this, you know, 
we mute this small side chain with a large side chain to feed and any we try to disrupt the interface yeah so later we generate you know that uh, uh, gear, we run the gear filtration from this we will see for example the wire type is from this is uh, you know one pig we call the timer okay and then if we generate we also have this monomer okay get the monomer peak here and then if we generate this uh, mutation then you will see okay it's only for the monomer so actually uh, if you the wire type they have the two forms they have some like a timer form or they have the monomer form but once you disrupt the timer formation uh, interface and then the only form the monomer peak yeah and then because we are the first uh, uh, to discover this is a time formation so of course we have to do a bit of carefully experiment to demonstrate it is indeed from timer right then we also use uh, you know the, the momentum so culture to express the kind three you know they will you will see okay the wire type is indeed from timer and the monomer and there also uh, we also try to express the whether this is conserved for other candidate like candidate two or candidate three, unfortunately we can't get it in a candidate one expression, but we only uh, we managed to get the candidate two soluble expression. Also, it is true for the candidate two, they also form timer and uh, monomer. Okay, we also use the segment to determine the uh, timer and monomer uh, molecular size. Yeah, it is indeed. You know, it's almost uh, time three times of the monomer uh, size, okay. And also, we also use the do the uh, SDS page check. You know, either timer or for uh, monomer. If you run SDS page, indeed they are you know form this you know band, you know the monomer band, right? Because the SDS page will denature the timer formation, and then you of course only get this one monomer band yeah for this one we also use you know complementary approach to, to continue to demonstrate the homo timer formation for example we do the negative stain you can see it is indeed from this like a, a timer structure similar as uh, what we uh, observe the crystal structure right of course we also uh, we have done the crosslink, for example, if you crosslink this, right, you can see this is a monomer, then, but if once you crosslink the monomer, they also form the timer. Yeah, and even you, once the crosslink, right, you are around this page, and then they were not disrupted, the still timer, you know, the timer band. Okay, uh, we also combine with, uh, because based on the structure, we also have done the mass spectra. So we, we mapped, for example, the crosslink is here, you know, like here to here. This is a, a intermolecular crosslink. We also get this intermolecular crosslink like between one protomer and another protomer. You can see here, yeah, crosslink. So all of this together then to demonstrate how it is indeed from homer timer. But whether it is from the homer timer, in there, then we use the BFC. You know, we design, for example, the, the based on the kinetic three. You put this the EYFP. You know, here then we have this HA because you have the N terminal or C terminal, right? EYFP. If they form timer, they will bring this N terminal and C terminal together. They will generate, of course, you know the 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 fluorescent uh, intensity. Okay, we also transfected this to the uh, human cell. You will see, okay, indeed, the all mutation or even with, you know, F3 dormant mutations are all expressed. Okay, however, you, you can see only in this case, for example, wire type, you get a very strong the intensity. But if you mutant F3, of course, because just as I mentioned, F3 dormant was involved for the timer formation right this is uh, and then if you mute the uh, delete the f3 domain of course it gets no signal very very low 
And then if we like we generate the mutation three, time mutation right, disruptor the timer, you will see okay the intensity also very very low. This is a demonstrated okay it is, you know, uh, uh three from timer in vivo, in in cell, and then we also did the structure comparison. You may previously they published one paper for the kindling. This is a mouse kindling, but they truncated the pH. You know, they only form the partial, we call it the truncated, you know, kindling to structure, and then they demonstrate, okay, kindling form actually form chimer. But uh, when we do the structure comparison with the forens, you will see there is a, you know, structure clash of the pH domain with this timer formation. That means, you know, in real case, you know, the forens were not form dimer, but they only can form the chimer. And also very, very important is that for this truncated uh, protein, right, they get this, you know, integrating peptide bonding to this, you know, uh, bonds here. But when compared to the, our structure, you see if the kindling form chimer and then they were, you know, clash with the beta tire binding, that means, okay, if the Kindly inform the timer, then they will become inactive because for the integrating, you know, single peptide transformation, then uh, transduction, they need a beta tail to bind into this side. Okay, so based on this one, they will propose the model, or we also did uh, use ITC to confirm whether, you know, the timer can bind the beta one tail or not. For example, you use the monomer. And then they can bind into the beta tail, and also use the kidney two monomer, also the, the same. But also, you find the kidney two bind stronger with the beta one tail compared to that of the kidney three. So, this is the reason why we, we could not get the beta one tail bind to the kidney three, but you know, for the kidney two, they can get this structure. Of course, then you get this trimer. And then they no longer bind into the beta one tail. So based on this one, then we propose a model. For example, how this uh, kindling can involve you know integrating for the um, singular transduction, because they need this you know monomer, and then they can bind into the beta uh, integrin tail beta two tail, and then can activate you know this uh, integrin. Okay. However, if they form this whole, uh, timer, right, and then they make this uh, uh, inactivated, so we call this auto inhibition model. Okay, then how they can, uh, you know, make this trans transition? We say maybe perhaps, for example, there are some um, like the protein translation modification, like phosphorylation, or some other factor can, you know. Control or modulate the uh, conversion between monomer and the trimer. But anyway, if they also the kindling three can in associate with the ribosome, and then they can modulate the specialized protein translation, and then the remaining question then is still we don't know. So what is this uh, underlying mechanism to the still under investigation? Okay, so based on this one, then we this uh, we uh, the next uh, we. The, uh, we want to talk about the protein quality control. Of course, you know, we have used the ribosome to synthesize the protein, right? Simultaneously, the, you know, the protein there also will be degraded, for example, dysfunctional protein or not properly folded protein. And then they have to, you know, monitor this, uh, you know, balance between the synthesis and the degradation. Right, because this is very, very important about the cellular protein homostasis. Right? Then if this loses the balance, then the link to you know like a disease, right? Then how the protein quality can uh, will be controlled, right? For example, after the protein translation, and then you get this uh, folding intermediate, they can form aggregate. Yeah, normally they form like a, a native state. Okay, later state the protein they also follow you know degradation, particularly for the aggregate protein or dysfunctional protein, they definitely uh, will be degraded. 
right? And then there are a, a certain mechanism pathway can take to the protein. For example, we have the proteus or uh, ER linked to the protein degradation or autophage. So today I'm going to talk about this protein uh, proteolysis. And then there are several modes of proteolysis by the uh, proteus. For example, this is the individual proteus. They can be uh, degraded by the uh, proteus and then like they form like a small peptide. Of course, the proteo complex, they also, for example, the proteasome, they also can, you know, degrade the, the protein. And then another very, very important is for the transmembrane protein. So for the transmembrane protein, right? So they, how they will be degraded? There are some like uh, proteus, you know, we call involved, we call the transmembrane proteins, they de degrade this one. Of course, there are the, some, you know, in the brain, we have some other system, they can, you know, uh, the secreted proteins, they can degrade this, um, this, uh, not properly folded the protein, we call it the dysfunction protein. Then today I'm going to focus on this is a trans. I'm going to focus on this transmembrane proteins. So among this one, there is one FTS type of the chips A proteins. And you know, they have two types, either I type, we call it I chips A proteins. You know, say this is the, you know, they have this proteins, ATP, uh, proteus and ATP domain located in the periplasmic side. Okay, so in the M type, right, and then they have this uh, ATP proteus, you know, located in the cytoplasm. You will see this is you know converted uh, cellular cellular uh, localization. Okay, but this is very very important. For example, the widely found in bacteria mitochondria and even uh, a chloroplast okay and also this is an attractive research target because FTS type is the only indispensable membrane embedded like a metal proteus okay and also the essential role of the FTS to take protein right involves either like a quality controller you know this misfolded protein or even the some like a conditional proteolysis of unimpaired protein, like the certain stress. And also the very, very important is also like, a, you know, linked to them, for example, some uh, lung membrane protein, or even like a sick Y, or, or etc. And also this FTS also form like a complex with some, we call the FHFLKC, then to form a large homo, uh, hollow enzyme, then the structure, you know, also unknown. But we would like to say this structure is eagerly required to understand the molecular mechanism, right? So, so for example, the sig Y, because the sig Y uh, is a very, very important component for the co translocum. You know, the sig Y, for example, you have this ribosome, you get this like a membrane protein, right? Translate with the ribosome, and then they have the certain signal, and then can be uh, recognized by this SRP uh, receptor, and then they have this sig Y, you know, then they can monitor, you know, they can involve this membrane protein to properly translocation and uh, in around this membrane. Okay, so this is the sig Y EG is very very important for the membrane protein. Uh, Biogenesis, and then to to understand so uh, address this question, right? Then we uh, start this is you know we try to get this uh, determine this entire structure. So you will see have this FTSH. This is the enzyme, right? Protein. Then they also have this uh, we call the FHFKC. This is uh, we say the regulator protein. Then the three both components, three proteins are membrane protein. So if we talk about the main protein, of course, we know it's very, very hard. You know, we are, you know, our P 
people the good at getting this you know expressed this entire three component protein you can see fts here hfkc and also we measure this uh, produce uh, like activity and atp atps activity you can see the both has this uh, activity and then they will put on uh, the negative stain you will see all oh, the form very good good particle you know very, very homogeneous and based on this one then we can work on you know, uh, go for the crime so actually we have done extensive uh, efforts to get this uh, entire complex structure should here you can get this at the top components the high resolution you also get the you know here this button very, very high resolution but you get this entire around 6.1 resolution and then here this is to have this entire structure it looks like as a cup right actually it's you know, uh, inverse cup you see this is a hfkc complex and then here this is fts uh, ftsh protein you, you see it's very very interesting they have the central pore you see here you know this is central pore yeah, given the time limit, so we just show you, you can see this is HFRK, how they organize in the entire complex, right? You can see this is K, this is the C, and then the, the next is the K, C, you know, the uh, periodically interaction together and then form this uh, cup, okay? And also, uh, we also get this transmembrane region. Actually, the here, this is a transmembrane helix. You can see they form like the central pole, okay? Because the central pole is around 18 angstrom, and then with, if we look superposed with some uh, substrate bound FTS in C terminal domain, you will see all the very similar structure, and then they bring this like a, a substrate, like a, you know, position to this membrane pore, then we, we think about, oh, could it be this pore is, could it be for the substrate entry side, right? We also actually for this, uh, this domain, we can just now mention a very high resolution. You can see clearly see this, um, like a AMP, MP, right? We also can see, for example, the produce domain, we have this zinc binding site very clear map uh, or so we can know how this complex was assembled you can see this k c k c right only the k interacting with the ftsh this periplasmic domain you can see this is the interface okay so among this interface later we also generate several residual mutation can test whether it can disrupt this like uh, interface then we will have done this, for example, where this is the mutant, right? If you have this wire type, and then they can pull down HFRK and FSC. Then if we muted along this interface, right? Just as I mentioned, you can see the pull down HFRKC was dramatically decreased. That means already disrupted the uh, uh, entire complex formation, okay? And then interestingly, we also test the uh, proteus activity. And then uh, for this one, we just uh, use uh, like a MIC Y, uh, MIC C, and also this we also use the SIC Y, uh, SIC C, uh, sorry, this we use the SIC Y as the substrate. We also use the C lambda as uh, the substrate. You will see, you know, if, for example, in this case, you can see the wire type. You get this, you know, target substrate was degraded. However, if disrupture this uh, residue, you will see the activity was, you know, decreased. That means, okay, the LHFRK is indeed important for the activity regulation. Okay, so we also then we propose the entire model. For example, you have the membrane bound protein, the either can enter from here. They also set sodic proteins that they can enter through here. And then we also have some other substrate that could enter from the central pole. And also we have the, you know, uh, transmembrane pole here, and then they come to this activity site. Okay. 
So, uh, so for this one, the one of my uh, postdoc, they, they produced a very nice movie. We can from this movie we can see we can sh sh show you how the entire complex uh, is assembled. Can you share? So this is F chair C and K subunit. Yeah, so how this subunit was formed. Yeah, this is the cup, the upper structure you can see, or how they inform this uh, KC complex. Yeah, this is a KC and this is K. Yeah, how they interact with each other to form this is a KC complex. And then the next, how the KC complex interacting with this FTSH, this is a periplastic domain just I will show you. Yeah, here this is the interface. And then now we have this entire FTSH, actually they form the hexamer, okay? Yeah, this is the catalytic side. And then this could be, you know, dark peptide. You can see this is a hexamer. In the total, we should have four hexamers. Okay, this is a proposed, uh, we say, substrate or some intracyte. Yeah, based on this, then I would uh, also uh, I would like to give my thanks to all of my members, particularly like the Wu Wenting, my PhD student, and the PhD student Go Kuo Jian. And of course, the uh, former PhD student now is postdoc Chao Zhu, uh, who did this excellent work. Of course, we also have the um, collaborators from like uh, diverse labs, and there are also uh, thanks for the financial support. Yeah, then the almost the four o'clock, so it's on time. So I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you, Dr. Gao. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, for the very insightful talks regarding uh, factors that involving in uh, protein translation uh, for a few topics. Um, so I would like to invite the floor for the questions. You, are, you can type your questions and uh, I will read it out. And for the face uh, audience in the at the Facebook, you also can ask the questions. So we have about 10 minutes for Q&A as uh, Dr. Gao. Uh, um, you have uh, other meeting to attend. So. Yeah, any question? I'm happy to take your question. Hopefully uh, there are a bit of, yeah, very, very intense. Uh, a lot of uh, recently we have good, uh, some result. And also, uh, subsequently, uh, consequently, we also got good financial support. Like just now, I talked to uh, the Dr. Chang. So, if you guys have any like uh, interest in the postdoc, or uh, project officer, research assistant, or even PhD student, please contact us. Not only me, uh, like our school, you know, or Lanyang Tech, NTU, or NUS, you know. Dr. Gao, there's a qu one question for you here from uh, yeah. Dr. Muni. So thank you very much, Dr. Gao, for a very informative presentation. Since membrane protein biogenesis is very complicated, may I know the challenge that you have encountered and how do you overcome the challenges when working yeah, on the... Uh, I yeah, guess yeah, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful question. This is uh, previously we often, you know, uh, very, very scared for the membrane protein, right? So recently, uh, some have good uh, uh, advanced some like uh, technology. Firstly, because of for the cry EM, for example, EM, right? We know need, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, sample, like uh, the crystallization. You have to have, you know, very uh, certain amount, quite a lot, actually. And also the protein has to be very, very, uh, purified and then otherwise it kind of grow crystal. However, for the crime study, right, actually we only need a very little sample and also uh, the pure 
pure purity could you know don't uh, require like as uh, uh, crystallization purpose. This is one. The second one is for the membrane protein, right? We also have some, for example, detergent development. So you can try, uh, for example, uh, detergent screening because the detergent now to, to make it more like a suitable for the membrane protein solubilization. Okay. And also uh, the another one also we use, for example, this in this case, we use the insect cell expression system. That means we not only use the bacterial expression system, so now we also can use the insect cell expression system, then can make the membrane protein could be more chance to to be uh, solubilized. Yeah, this is what we we think uh, from the years of the, the experience. Yeah, right. hopefully this can help you. Thank you, Dr. Gao, for the answer. Uh, while we are waiting, I think uh, I have uh, one question also, uh, Dr. Gao. Yes, please. So regarding the uh, topics on uh, um, beat A protein, yeah, you have shared with us, which is a uh, paralog or to the EFG, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, you have shown also the uh, the importance of the protein uh, at the ribosome bus genesis or maturation of the 50S. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. So um, I wonder uh, from the structure they have obtained, um, so the differences between the uh, EFG and the bit A, how it actually play role in the maturation of the 50S in this case, which I've shown yeah, in there. So you are right. So this is a very, very so, uh, good question. Actually, we are also part of it. So you will see, for example, you can get the 70 uh, BPA bundles in entire ribosome, right? And then the mimic, uh, of course, it's not uh, uh, exactly as the EFG. You know, EFG has a domain four, but of the BPA have the C terminal domain. Then the C terminal actually is bounding to the, uh, the CSA end of the A side, right? Uh, tRNA. However, then we also ponder why the, the, the BPS can bind to the 50S. Okay, so this is, uh, we still don't understand. Uh, so how it can uh, bind to the 50S and then and then they can involve the ribosome biogenesis. Yeah, this is uh, actually what we are doing now. Well, the, 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 uh, this is an investigation is underway, but uh, we try to get the structures up. There is some like, uh, we face some like a challenging, so hopefully we can sort it, sort it out soon, because the homogeneous is is a big issue. Yeah, I see. Thank you, uh, Doctor for that. So it means that bit A have two functions. One is on the uh, regulating the stress or, or suboptimal growth of the bacteria. Yeah, yeah. It's involving the PPGPP and the GDP, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while another part of the function could be in uh, maturation of the um, 350S. Yeah, yeah. So that means that uh, maybe, you know, uh, under stress, they take like, a, a dual function, not only for the ribosome biogenesis, or even your biogenesis, like a modular ribosome, they still can, you know, like uh, modulate the function uh, to, to, to through binding to the entire ribosome. Yeah. So, and also, you you know, so quite interesting is the BPA also can bind not only GTP, right? So also can, can bind the homo analog uh, molecule like the PPGPP, you know, it was synthesized by the rare A, right? Right. Thank you, Dr. Gao, for that. Um, any question from the uh, audience here, please? So we are great to have uh, Dr. Gao with us here, also show us several beautiful structure. And uh, so for, I also uh, intriguing by this uh, kindling tree. Yeah, yeah. Specific um, binding, uh, un unlike the other two kindling two or one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the interaction with the ribosome. Yeah. So, so this is very interesting is that, so only uh, we showed it here, uh, so only you can see here, so only kindling tree can uh, you know, associate with ribosome with uh, you know mediated by the RAC one. 
but others can in one can in two they don't have this this function so can in one can it they, they don't associate with ribosome so the you will see this is the kidney one two three uh, they have some you know function maybe uh, overlap for example they also can bind into some similar you know like the partner but uh, they have the you know is, is not a redundant function they have different function so very very interesting so that's why at that time we take four years to get the structure yeah so um yeah go yes, ahead please. Yes, Dr. Gao, please. Yeah. So, but then uh, you would ask uh, how this uh, we 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 wanted to get this kindling three in the band of the ribosome mediated by the rac one, right? So, so, but uh, maybe because the kindling three band with the ribosome is not like uh, in one pocket, so unfortunately we couldn't get the structure at the moment. But uh, we we are, we are thinking about some uh, strategy whether we can trap this. Yeah, so we look forward for that. Uh, I think um, Dr. Kao have give, give us a very good lessons on uh, not only a uh, protein translation that we we have uh, learned about how the ribosome producing the protein, but we also have seen uh, many study involving the mutants and also the growth of uh, certain mutant of the bacteria or organisms under certain stress. And we learned that many of the protein are non-essential when we are testing it, but is essential for certain under certain uh, specific environment and we now also learn it from here that under certain specific stress it is the growth is regulated by specific proteins and involving protein translation so we hope to learn uh, more uh, in the future from dr gao